Hello, family. Welcome back to the Explore the Extraordinary podcast. My name is Betty, and today I'm joined by Miranda. And Miranda is a podcast host. She's also a spiritual experiencer who has had a lot of experiences with after death communication. And mm -hmm. she's I, I'm really excited to hear her story. I'm going to hear it for the first time with all of you. So I'm definitely, I'm really actually super excited for this. My whole body is covered in tingles right now. So I'm going to toss it right over to you, Miranda, to share about who you are with our community. Thanks for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Well, as soon as you had the tingles, you did pass them to me because I immediately felt it as well. And my goodness, this is a surreal moment to share uh, this, this part of my life with you and with the IANS community. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I kind of just opened myself up and I said, you know, Spirit, what do you want me to say? How do you want me to start? And um, I'm just going to go ahead and get to when everything changed and happened in my life. I was 27 years old. This was in 2009. And my husband and I just celebrated our one year anniversary, wedding anniversary. So we got married in May, 2008. And he was, he was so special. He is so special. He's, he's right here. And he is the reason, I don't want to say he is the reason why I'm here today, but he definitely helped open my eyes to something bigger that than I would have ever expected or realized that what is possible. So in June, 2009, he was still here with us in this physical world. And I was waking up around the same time in the middle of the night. It was like 1 34 AM. You know, when things like that happen, you'll never forget the time when you keep waking up repeatedly. And the first time that I woke up, I saw these three dark shadows at the foot of our bed. And the presence of these shadows was so tangible. Like I felt this intense energy that I thought someone was in our house about to rob us. And I hit Lance and I said, Lance, 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 you got to wake up. I see these three dark shadows and someone's in our house and he turns on the light and nothing's there. So for about three weeks, this is happening almost every night. I didn't tell anybody about it. I just kind of went on and thought I was crazy, right? And um, Lance has a twin brother. His name's Drew, special, special person in, in, in this world and in, in my life. And um, they planned a Harley motorcycle trip together. And they were about to start in Vegas where we lived, Lance and I lived, and travel all the way up to Montana and just have this, this brother experience that they've never had in their 38 years. I was supposed to go on the trip. Um, I chose not to. And I'll just kind of leave it there because I could take it to so many different levels of why I chose not to go. So they had this incredible experience together. He got to their destination about five miles away from home and a young girl misjudged her time and pulled out in front of him and he hit her car. Um, so Drew had to give me the call and tell me what happened. At this point, he hadn't passed away yet, um, but he was in out of consciousness try to get to where he was in Montana as fast as I could. And it just didn't happen. And, um, I remember having a layover in Salt Lake city. And when the tires hit the tarmac, as soon as we landed in Salt Lake, I felt this whoosh kind of come through me like, like a knowing, like a feeling, like a sensation. And in that moment, I'm like, he's gone. He didn't make it. And I turned on my phone and then there was a voicemail from his brother saying that he'd passed away. So we go through the funeral arrangements and just for sake of time, um, I won't go into detail about that. Um, he was military, so that's his, his flag in the back. Um, served 20 years and it was, 
it, it's the unthinkable. Everything changes. Everything changes. And I had to go back home and start creating this new life. But at this point, I had no faith. I had no belief in God. Um, I didn't have a purpose before he died. I certainly don't have a purpose now. I had no idea who I was. And my mom had given me a book right after the funeral. And the book is by a medium, uh, James Van Prague. I think he was like the bee's knees, like back in the nineties or something. I'm not too familiar with him, but I know he did, did some really good work. And so I read his book and he said, we all have the gift. If you want to communicate with your loved ones on the other side, go do it. We can all do it. And at this point, it's like, I have nothing to lose. I was so desperate to talk to him, to feel that connection. I, I would do anything. And so I remember this one really, really, really dark night. It was darkest bottom of the barrel. Like, I don't care if I go tomorrow, you know, no purpose, no love, only fear. Like the, what grief is to me was in, is in that moment, isolation, depression, anxiety, addictions, flare up, a whole bunch of shit. And I remember putting his hat on his Harley hat and his, this red bandana. And I had his digital watch on my wrist. And I, I was just, if you are here, you need to give me a sign. And a few weeks pass. I take his stuff back out. I'm looking at the watch and there's eight colon 12 on the watch. And I'm thinking that watch was broken when I got the watch. It's a digital watch. How is it saying eight twelve? Then I heard this voice because they come in on my right. Now that I know what's going on, <laughs> what I've learned, um, I heard, go look up scripture eight twelve. And I'm thinking, I don't read the Bible. I don't, I don't really believe in God. This doesn't make sense, but I followed it. I followed that voice and I looked up scripture 812. Like that's how much I don't know anything about the Bible. And it turns out there's a lot of 812s, but <laughs> um, I'm going to, I actually wrote down the scripture because I don't want to mess this up. But the first one that popped up was John 812. And John 8, 12 is, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And that was it for me. That was my sign, my validation that he is with God, whatever still that means. Because um, I, you know, I blamed God. I'm 27. I deserve to be married. I deserve to have that. I deserve this. You took him away from me. But then as I was starting to develop this communication with him, it was like a new type of relationship. You know, I kind of felt like he was with me. Like the pain wasn't so heavy over time. The grief was subsiding and it was working for me. So I just kind of kept talking to him and ask him things. And I heard, I hear him so loud and clear. And it's interesting because when some mediums talk about oh it's kind of subtle or you know they're puzzle pieces it's like yes when you are communicating with spirit in the on the other side it is like that but sometimes that voice sometimes our loved ones just come screaming in and it is so clear and I had to trust that and I knew I needed to move I moved from Vegas to Denver by myself pack my bags fresh start clean slate Adios, Vegas. You you never really did serve me, but you definitely don't serve me now. Um, and it brought me back to life. Colorado brought me back to life. It was a, it was a type of community, a type of love, a type of environment that I'd never experienced before, and so grateful for that. Um, because I wasn't really fully healing my grief, I was kind of still 
shoving it, shoving it under, didn't see a therapist, didn't have support groups. I mean, what I would do for the grief community on Instagram now, than you know, what it was like in 2009, it, it's, it's not even comparable. Like there are so many amazing people. That is the bonus about it. Social media is how so many people are helping each other. And I, and I love that, but I still opted to get through this death alone. And that was, that ended up being very detrimental. And something my mom had taught me is you need to be in a relationship to be happy. So I jumped to another marriage very quickly after Lance died. And turned out that I was wrong. And I want to bring this up. It's interesting. I want to talk about this because I normally don't. Um, I never saw a psychic or medium never even crossed my mind. I already knew I could talk to him. So I didn't really feel like I needed another person to tell me he was with me. I already knew it, but my friend gifted me a session with this psychic and I was already dating my second husband. I think we were engaged to be honest. And the psychic, I would had so many reservations about this second marriage. I was not listening to my intuition. I was not, I was going against everything. All the red flags were turning into butterflies and rain. I'm like, oh, it's fine. He'll change, you know? And this psychic said, Lance wants you to get married. This guy is it. You, this is, this is what he wants you to do. And I bring this up because it's so important that psychic mediums don't always have the answer that we have to follow our little voice inside. And listen, I am a big advocate in that work, but there's a fine line when these light workers and healers are telling their client, this is what you need to do. Instead of saying, what do you think you need to do? And I would say, I need to get out of this relationship, right? So I, I went through it, I went with it. I got married and uh, I think it's okay to say regrets and like, everyone's like, oh, you don't regret anything. It's like, hey, I kind of regret it and that's okay. I don't have a lot of negative energy around the word regret, but it was a good lesson, good lesson. So then um, at this point, I had fallen into the funeral industry um, and I became a funeral director. Becoming a funeral director in this, uh, in that line of work was the most life-changing experience I had ever had in my entire life. I miss that job every single day. I miss being with the families. I miss being with the deceased. I had never felt so connected to myself than when I was in that environment. And this is when I'm starting to learn wait a minute, I can hear voices. I can hear people, these loved ones talking to me. Like I remember going into an arrangement room um, with a man who'd passed away. His, His wife and daughter were coming to make arrangements for him and I wanted to make sure he looked good. And, um, and I always talk to them always. And I could feel them next to me. It was so weird. And I still didn't know what was going on. And when we were planning the funeral arrangements, the daughter and mother were kind of bickering at each other what shirt he should wear. And all of a sudden I like heard red and checkered, I mean, red and black plaid shirt and I could see it. And I said, you know, does he by any chance have a red and black plaid shirt? And they said, oh my gosh, yes, yes. And I said, well, maybe you should go with that one. And it was just a really beautiful moment of seeing two people who were arguing over something so small and trivial and then having them come back together of like, yeah, that's what dad would want. And those moments happened all the time. But I had to leave that profession because it was really stressful. I was getting sick. It was too much. Um, The workload was too much. And it turned out to be a sales job. So everyone listening, (laughs) funeral homes and corporations, 
need to pay the bills. So if they want to upgrade you on the casket, you upgrade because you want to, not because someone told you to. So just sometimes we've got to watch ourselves. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So um, the, the interest of the family wasn't there anymore for me. And I was, it wasn't worth it. So I stepped away. And then this is when uh, things got, I don't, I don't want to say dark, but I was now really lacking purpose. I stepped away from a job I loved. I wasn't really talking to Lance anymore. Um, I did meet someone amazing through Match. And uh, his, coincidentally, if there's such thing, uh, his first wife passed away um, unexpectedly. And we both had widowed on our status and kind of connected that way. And we've been married nine years. And so we have a child together. And so he was a wonderful, wonderful gift from above. I do think Jess and Lance brought us together. Um, but, you know, everything, I've got everything on paper. I'm in a great town. I've got a healthy child. I've got a marriage, but I'm just miserable. I am just no sense of life. I'm wasted space. And I was crying out for help. I'm like, I don't even know who I'm crying out to because there's no belief in God right now, no connection to self. And um, I stumbled across another book called The American Psychic by Marla Fries. And um, she was the second person in my life to tell me the same message, but at different times. And that is we all have the gift. We all have the gift to connect. But this time when I heard it, and I started re researching mediumship, then I understood, oh my gosh, this is what was happening to me in the funeral home. I was talking to them, they were talking to me. Okay, wait, we can do this? You don't have to be the chosen one? Oh, we all have the gift? Okay, great, now this makes sense to me. And so in 2009, when I heard that message, we have the gift, that gave me permission to talk to Lance. But then when I heard that message in 2018, it gave me purpose to start my spiritual journey. And everything just kind of unfolded from there. A lot of lessons and reminders and, and here I am. And it has become my purpose to help people through death and grief. And to remind people who are open to it that your loved one is here. All they did was they dropped the body. They're just a different form of energy. But the hang up with humans is we've got blocks. We've got obstacles. We blame ourselves for the death. We never got to tell them what we needed to, whatever that list is. So I think, you know what, let's work through those obstacles. And then when you can really come from a place that nothing is separated, death didn't separate you. When you can come back and say, Oh my gosh, I can talk to them. They're here. I can build a new relationship. It it changes everything. Everything. And so I did go into mediumship um, but as a professional for a few years. And then I said, why would I charge someone X amount of dollars when they can do it themselves, when they've got the gift? And so I stepped away and now I'm a funeral celebrant and this is just so much more purpose, purposeful for me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that really, that hit me. You know, when, when I get to hear somebody's story for the first time and we're recording, sometimes I'm like over here trying to clean up my tears. I was, I was really feeling a lot of compassion, obviously for you, like being newly married and having your husband leave form, but also for his twin. And I, mm. yeah, I, yeah, that's a lot, you know? Um, so I want you to expound on what a funeral celebrant is because before we started recording, I asked about titles and you said that, and I would love to, to get the insight on what exactly that is. Yeah, and I, gosh, what a great question because no one really knows what it is. So when we go to a funeral, the traditional funeral here in, in our culture is usually, a deacon, an officiant, someone from the church will come and speak about 
religion, the, the loved one coming reunited with God. It's, it's, it's strongly religious based. And I think that is important for some people. But I also know that there's a very large group of people who may not identify with that or who are trying to understand it. Or maybe they do believe that their loved one is still with us, but they're learning more about it. And to me, funerals are about the person who passed away. That is why we're here. We're here to talk about their legacy, their tribute, the good, the bad, what they learned in life. How did they love? And so I write funerals. I write memorials and funeral services, and I lead them. And sometimes families in different cities will call or day states and say, you know, I found you and I want you to lead mom's service. And it is, it, that is the true calling of what I need to be doing is being back in with the decedent, with the deceased, with the loved one in that environment, in the space with the grieving families, because that's what I love so much about funeral directing. And then I love to write. So check that box. And then since I learned mediumship, what my process is I actually bring the loved one in when I write the service. So I truly believe anyone who writes a book, it's all just channeling. So I'll say, what do you want me to say at your service? And I'll write it. And then I'll hand that draft over to the family. Sometimes it snicks like, whoa, that hit home a little too hard and I got to make some changes. Um, but most of the time it works. Wow, that's a beautiful way to combine all of those gifts and mm -hmm. combine creativity. So I think that that's also very hopeful uh, because you can do what you're passionate about. You can be creative and you can make a career out of it. And I think that that's all very, very inspiring. So I want to ask you about your podcast. Uh, what was the motivation behind uh, creating it? And can you share a little bit about what it is? Thank you. Thank you so much for asking me that. Um, it has changed and evolved so twice, twice now. Um, September 2022, um, that was a, just a monumental year for me. And that's when I started asking myself, if you were to die tomorrow, what would you regret? and not doing and the podcast kept coming up and I'm like I've got to do it I've got to do it and you know I hearing some of my past episodes it's like cringeworthy I mean God podcasting has taught me so much about myself and how I view myself and the over analytical part and it's just like let it fucking go Miranda like just let it go and so that's been a big challenge but the the idea behind my podcast draft one was called letters to the living. And, um, I was writing channeled letters to people who were on the, the grief path. And so, um, yeah, that's how it all started. And then I was still not connected with it. And then I'm like, well, why am I doing this anyway? And I started the podcast cause I want to have people come on and share how their life has changed from death and grief, how they've had this awakening, how they're starting to see things, how they're, um, you know, just open to maybe building a new type of relationship with their loved one, because, you know, we've got a choice what happened when we go through a major significant loss. Like, I feel like grief takes down all of these layers and these barriers around us that we've been carrying for so long and we're so vulnerable and so exposed and it's like, when we're this wide open, we can either let the light in and like really see what's coming through and what we need to cry about and talk about. Or sometimes we just bring those walls back over us. And some people choose to really go feet, head, head in, take a deep dive in grief and say, I want, I want to learn from this. And there's many ways you can do it, conventional way, spiritual way. But obviously, since I have started communicating with Lance within the first month after he died, and it was so life-changing for me and the grief kind of melted away. It's like, why can't I, why can't we start talking about that? 
Thank you for that. I want to ask you, what do you think the most common misconception around death and grief is? Ooh. Oh, I mean, I'm going to get, I, I've gotten hate, not hate mail, but I have been called out for this one. My biggest misconception is when I hear people say that you have to learn to live with grief, that it just, it never goes away. And I have really come to a point where I really want to empower people to feel that grief, to integrate that grief into their life, but also know that they don't have to hang on to it. But this is what's, this is what's really important is so many people have different definitions of grief, what grief means to them. I hear off, I often hear that grief is love and I get that. Because when we love, we're going to grieve. And I totally understand that. And I even heard like grief at its highest form is love. So I'm not going to deny that. But when I went through grief, that was the separation, the isolation, the depression, the addictions, the, the pain, the uncertainty, the fear, the suffering. Like that, what is grief, the blame, the shame, the guilt. And it's like, those are human emotions that yes, we do need to go through, but there's no reason to hang on to it. And we're going to experience grief in different ways. It's not going to be death, but what happens when mom dies and you're, and we have you didn't work through it. What happens when brother dies? What happens when dad dies? Now you got to go through all of those experiences over and over again. And it's just, you feel it's like endless. Yeah, I think that changing your idea around death can change your experience with grief. So when you see death as just a door, like how you shared, like they just dropped the human, they just dropped yes. the skin suit. There's nothing really to be so attached to. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, oh, so does that mean if I if I'm not in a state of grief forever that I didn't love my loved one? That's like the thinking of that that train of thought mm -hmm. that if you're not completely devastated with grief for the rest of your life, because somebody close to you died, then you didn't really love them. But again, it's just changing the perception around what you think about death. Which, so, exactly. You said yeah. that so well. Yeah. Thank you. So I want to know about people are always really eager to find out tangible tools. So you're saying that everybody has access to this. Everybody can communicate mm -hmm. with loved ones that have crossed over. Do you have any tips on how we can do that? Yeah. I mean, tip number one is obviously keeping that open mind, knowing that you can do it. Just having that awareness of like, maybe this is something real because if, if you haven't gotten that through that first step and then they try talking with you or communicating or showing you a sign, you're going to, you're going to rationalize it. You're, you're going to just, well, it wasn't the exact sign I asked for, or it didn't come as soon as I wanted it to. So be open. The second is whether you want to learn how to bring your loved one back into your life and communicate with them or not, it doesn't matter. But step number two is how we all need to learn how to quiet the noise and the distraction. It is so noisy around us. And if we, if you can really just be in quiet, whether that's going for a hike in the mountains, whatever that is, that's where all the answers happen. That's where everything comes in is when we can quiet and then find your way to meditate, find your way to set some time out and set that intention of talking to them and bringing their, their energy in, bringing their presence. And sometimes we just need to sit in that field for a little bit and kind of get used to it. Like it's important to just listen to yourself and you will be, everyone will be guided in so many different ways. But that would really be the three steps, honestly. Those are great tools. I Yeah, I really resonate with those. So I'm curious about your relationship with your husband that passed away now. Do you consider him one of your guides? Do you still communicate with him? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I talk to him every day. It is an everyday conversation. Um, I would consider him a guide in some way. Yeah. But I think he's more of an observer maybe in a protector, it kind of feels that way. I think he's just like, this is, this is your ride. 
you go for it and know I'm I'm here along the way. It's just kind of how I see it. That's really beautiful. I love that. So, and I know that you said that your, your current husband also had a loved one, had his wife passed away. So yeah. what, what is that like kind of having access to mediumship abilities and having both of your partners pass away and then coming together? Do you communicate with his wife? Uh, I talked, I do. I don't talk to her as much as I talk to Lance, but I definitely have had an open conversation with her. And she's given me a couple of different like um, signs and or things to say <clears throat> to Michael. But I think Michael's open to what I do, but we, we are very different spiritually. And so um, there's some things I just I don't bring up to him. And I mean, and to be completely honest, I think there's still some grief and some stuff that he's working through. And I just, I'm here when he wants to talk, I give him his space. I mean, Jess and Lance are so much a part of our life. Like our child knows about them and everything, but yeah, it's interesting. Wow. Thank you for your honesty with that. Cause I think yeah. that that's also a really important thing to put out there is that not all spiritual people have partners who are exactly the same kind of spiritual as them. Yeah. And that's another conversation. I'm curious, once you started to come into your gifts and you started to communicate more with Lance, did you tell his family? Were they open-minded to it? Did it close any relationships for you coming out of the spiritual closet like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we all have a level of love and respect um, with, with each other. You know, Lance's family, I'm not as close with them as I would like to be. Um, they... Uh, they do have a different religious ideologies than I do. Um, it's not really talked about. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. They have experienced so much loss in that family, so many deaths and they know what I do. And, um, Lance's sister, her, her son passed away last year. So Lance's nephew at 32 years old. And so I will talk to her and try as much as she'll let me, but it is a process for some people. And I did an interview with someone and she said, Elise said, not everyone subscribes to spirituality and we have to be okay with that. Yeah. Whoops. I think that I think that that's a really important point to make as well that yeah this isn't going to be for everybody and like you shared if you have to go whatever your grief journey is like is kind of individual to you but I think the information that you're sharing what I'm getting from your share is that you don't have to be defined by your grief you can allow it to transform and even become a catalyst to something that gives you a lot of purpose mm -hmm. yeah that that's it. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really beautiful. So, okay. I want to see if maybe there's any other kind of mystical experiences that you'd like to share about. It doesn't have to be on this topic, just anything. I mean, obviously you're very connected, so I'm sure you got something. In yeah. There. Um, you know what, this, this has come up. Oh, I like my stomach drops when I'm about to say, um, I will, I started getting, um, watching NDEs last year. So like I've heard about them, but it took some time for me to actually like actively look into it. Right. And I watched almost every video, um, on YouTube with coming home and there's another one, but I can't think of it. Um, they have completely transformed the way that I see death because one of my, I've had fears around it too. Let's be honest here. But mediumship taught me that, okay, we can't communicate with them. Great. There's, it's, it's just energy, soul to soul meeting, connecting, you know, and I get that. But then I thought, well, where are they? Now I've got questions where everyone's at. And, and, the, and hearing these spiritual death experiences, near death experiences, help me find that answer. So my 
I commend everyone who has sat down and shared that experience because I know that's not easy. I know there's ridicule out there. I know there's people who will always push their thoughts and their agenda and their ideas of what is, but it doesn't matter because every single story has brought me closer of how I help people understand death. And um, I got, I get so lost in these stories. I did get so lost in these stories to a point where I can't even believe I'm admitting this, that I wanted to experience that. That I want, I, I could choke up, that I wanted to feel what that unconditional love meant, where I'm seen as perfection in like that everything, what you did in the past, it just doesn't matter. You were, you were, everything is perfect the way it should be. Whether you do have that glass of wine on Tuesday that you said you weren't going to have, whether, you know, you did do that, that you said you weren't going to do, it doesn't matter. And I was having this conversation and I had a really hard time with the word God for years, decades. I would say I can freely say the word God probably within the last six months, if I'm going to be honest. And near death experiences helped me with that. And I was having this conversation with God. I'm like, I just want to feel what that light is like. I just, I just want to feel that and be there. And then it was so loud. He said, I don't know. I said, he, it said, you don't have to die to feel that love. Just ask me for it. And since that, everything has changed. Like here I am on Ian's podcast. Like it's so cool. And it's like, as soon as we just ask, so many things unfold. Everything. That is so well said. Thank you for saying that. And I think that that's very common. So thank you for your vulnerability in saying it. It happens all the time. People always mm. are like, I, I want to experience this. And I'm like, girl, I'll come over there and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like, what exactly do you want to happen? But yeah, you know, and I think that some people have these experiences because they're meant to share about them. And, yes. and I think that there's also people that are here to learn from others as opposed to learning firsthand. Um, and I, I love the message that you got from God that you can experience that feeling whenever you want. I have that feeling, the same feeling of heaven. I get to experience it when I consciously connect with somebody, especially in this space. The space is so sacred to me and it's so beautiful and it's wrapped around authenticity and creativity yeah. and all of those really elevated spiritual principles and spiritual virtues. And so that feeling for me, that connection is heaven-like. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I just want to see if there's anything else that you'd like to share to feel more complete about our time together today. Yes. There's one story, one quick story I want to share. And it's just, it's such a cool story. And it's, it's a recent one that I'll, that I'll never forget. Um, it was February of this year and my husband was out of town. I was had daughter, mom, daughter duty, and I was putting her to bed. I read to her every night. She's eight, you know, I still do the snuggle and the reading and I couldn't find my phone. I, it's gone. I searched Tyler. I spent like 20 minutes and I could have left the phone and just been like, you know, we'll get through it. But we listened to like a meditation at night and it kind of just music and it kind of just helps call in the evening. So it was important to find the phone. And I, I hear again, well, just ask us, ask us where it's at. And I'm like, all right, where's my phone? And still I'm frantically moving and, you know, looking at the refrigerator. I don't know. And then all of a sudden I heard a, like a plop, like a plop on the ground. And my daughter comes running in with my phone. And she said, mama, it was on the toy chest. So, but it was, now I remembered where I put it. It was like on the top. It wasn't on a ledge. It was on a flat surface in the middle. So something had to have pushed my phone off the toy chest for it to drop and make that sound to catch my, my daughter's attention. And it's just ask. And I don't know. 
I think just building that relationship with spirit too. Mediumship taught me that. It taught me about connection. It's not about communicating with our loved ones on the other side. That's a small piece of mediumship. Mediumship is connection with the self, with the other side, and you just go, get to talk with spirits. So anyway, it, it it is, it's not bliss every day, but as soon as you let it in, as soon as you let that light in and just ask, be open to receiving and doing those impulsive things, sometimes it works out. Wow. Thanks so much, Miranda. Yeah, thank I've, you. I've so enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> Me too. People, can, people can connect with you and subscribe to your podcast in the liner yes. notes of this episode. Great. And thank you again for serving our community and we'll see you next time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.